Hi, I'm Leanne Lee with another episode of Truly Home with CapFed. A friend of mine just bought her first house and I am so excited because today we are going to introduce some curb appeal. You can see by looking at these shutters, this house has lacked maintenance. But in a few simple steps, we're gonna be able to create some curb appeal that's going to make it warm, inviting, and beautiful from the street. Venting last year's pots with some spray paint. We're going to use them and put our own new plants in them. I think spray painting is such a great way to transform the look of anything really. And you always want to start at the bottom and work your way up. I'm using another pot just kind of as an easel to hold it while I spray paint it. But I promise you, you do this and it will make everything look brand new. I'm doing gold, turquoise, and aqua. It's going to be my color theme this year. And then I'm going to put some red flowers in it so it's really going to pop. Always make sure you get this inside rim as well so that it looks like the pot was also painted on the inside. We don't want to give any clues that these beautiful new pots were old at one time. To say that Sarah's front door is lackluster would be an understatement. This door needs help. Now we've taken it off the hinges and we've laid it out so that we can see what we need to do to it. This door is, I'm going to say boring. And so one way that you can add some interest is by taking decorative molding. Now you can buy long pieces of molding at the hardware store and you can cut those, but I'm going to give you an easy tip here. Take open back frames that are the size you need and liquid nail them on. Then you don't even need a saw, so there's no excuse for having an ugly door. We're going to use liquid nail. I'm going to kind of lay this out a little bit just so I can see what kind of pattern I want. And you just need something that you're going to use as your measurement to make sure that it's the same on both sides. So I'm going to put it about here and then you see there's just one small window. So I'm taking another frame, which is just a five by seven opening. And then I'm going to put it so that it kind of off centers. Now, right now you're thinking I'm crazy, but we're going to caulk this in and then paint the entire door one color. So these, these trim pieces will all be one color. It's going to add dimension and it's going to be beautiful. Once your door is prepped, you're ready for paint. And the first step of painting is always priming. Make sure you use a primer that is suitable for the surface that you're painting. The front door is finally dry. And if you remember, we removed the storm door from Sarah's house. And so now we're just gonna have her front door exposed. When you paint your front door a vibrant color and you are constantly going in and out, sometimes you can scuff the bottom of it. So we're adding a brush nickel kick plate, which coordinates with her hardware for her door. Super easy to install. And I just think it adds so much interest. This door is really gonna pop from the front of her house. It's just a few screws. So because we're trying to stay on a budget with this house, we are not replacing the garage doors. But there's no reason why we can't make them look beautiful. Here are some magnets. It's decorative hardware that goes on your existing metal garage door. You're not going to believe this. Let me show you how you can transform in literally a minute your plain garage doors. You can make them look like beautiful carriage doors two handles. We're going to put them and you can move them around. That's what's awesome. 
Look, you put them here. Oh, whoops, don't like it. Move it a little bit, no problem. Let's put one here and one here. This may be my favorite tip of all. Seriously, these garage doors are amazing. These shutters have got to go. Now, we could take these down, power wash them, and then give them a fresh coat of paint, and that would be fine. Sarah is opting to go with a completely different style of shutter. She wants to do a raised panel instead of a louver. So we're gonna take these down. She's purchased new ones, and we're gonna put the new ones up as we finish the project. One down. So we pre-drilled the holes for Sarah's new shutters. Now we're screwing in the uh, screws that came with them right into the house. For a little bit of effort, the impact that this has made is unbelievable. Couple more and we are finished hanging the shutters. So needless to say, this light has seen better days. It always amazes me when I come and I see houses and how underscaled lighting is. So we're gonna put a bigger, more pronounced light here, which will help for security and also for appeal. So the first thing we did was we shut off the breaker so that there's no electricity to this. Now we're going to take it down. We've removed the light bulb. We could spray paint this if we liked the scale of it, but we're gonna go with a bigger one. Now, electricity is not something to mess with. So if this is something that you don't feel comfortable doing, you can always bring in a professional to handle this part. So I'm gonna take the light down. This is so old, we're still using flat head screws. If that tells you anything. Oh, wow, all right. Okay, we've got the new light installed. We've put a new light bulb in it. I just went down and flipped on the breaker, so now it's the moment of truth. Oh my gosh, that is so much better. Do you see what I mean about the scale? And it illuminates her house numbers. I love it. So to add some interest to the front of Sarah's house, we've decided to build some cedar window boxes. So I actually cut my boards with my little saw here, but you could get those boards cut at your local lumber yard. I measured the window and I cut the boards accordingly. Now I'm just gonna create a box. The easiest way to do that is to take your bottom and then take one of your sides I'm gonna use a nail gun for this. If you don't have a nail gun, you could definitely use screws. All right, once you get, definitely always helps when you have an extra set of hands and always make sure you have your goggles on. Just shoot some little nails in here. These are two inch brad nails I'm using just to secure it. Move down the box. And go ahead and put one at the end just to make sure that you keep your board straight. Add a couple more. I don't think you can have too many nails. Now flip it over, do the other side. And adding this dimension will really make the front of her house pop. Now all that's left is to put our ends on. I've already pre-cut those. 
So we're just going to go right on the edge. And then flip it over and do the other side. Okay, once you finish that, we cannot forget an important step. And it's to drill drainage holes in the bottom. We're finishing up our mulching project around our trees. I'm sure if you mow yourself, you know how difficult it is to mow around them. Between the rocks, between the root system, it's tough to do. So we decided to put some mulch beds around these to make it a little bit easier. And we're using a technique called the natural edge. And that is creating a trench around the tree that will actually hold the mulch. And that makes it easy to mow and weed eat. So we started by spray painting a circle around the tree so we knew exactly where we wanted to trench. And then we took the shovel on its edge and we created a small trench by cutting out the grass. Then we took a weed eater and basically scalped all of the grass on the inside that we wanted to kill. And then we took uh, a weed killer or grass killer, which will not hurt the tree itself, but it kills all of the live leaves that are surrounding that. And that will kill all of that so that you don't have it coming up through your mulch. And now we're just finishing up. We've laid our mulch down. See how that natural edge just holds the mulch so beautifully? I promise, you do something like this, you will thank me when you go to weed eat. Because you won't have landscaping and things in the way that keep you from being able to just mow. So we're finishing up here. Mulch comes in all different colors and even some different fragrances. So go to your local nursery, check out the mulches that are there and find some for your mulch beds. I promise you will not be sorry. So we did some general cleanup on the house. We trimmed the bushes, we cleaned out the rock beds, and we power washed the house. These don't seem like fun projects, but they're all things that make a huge difference. So we finished off Sarah's house with some accessories. We added some pops of color with some flowers, the planters that we planted. We added a colorful doormat and a couple of lanterns. These things all made such a huge impact. I don't think you would even recognize it if you drove down the street. This house is truly amazing. I just hope this episode has helped you find yet another way to make your house truly home.